Welcome to this radio video and we are continuing our series on the different terms and terminology used on a radio and what they mean. The first few videos are about the modes and we have a video about AM modes that's just been done. We're now in FM mode. FM. Now on my receiver here because that's the front end of my ICOM receiver. You might wonder I got FM and I've got something on the left that's called WFM and we'll talk about basically both of them because they're pretty much the same except for one little detail and uh, that's why I think both of these modes can be explained in only one video um, so FM for a lot of people once again in North America and uh, maybe even Europe is uh, something that's probably um, you know said a lot is that when you say FM people think of FM radio listening to music on your boombox or so on uh, or listening to FM radio on your car uh, but you know what FM actually if we had to you know give a correct term to what's FM radio we shouldn't usually call it VHF we should have the term VHF on our receivers. In Europe, they call the, e, the medium wave band or the AM band medium wave. Uh, well, you know, we should probably technically call uh, FM radio the VHF radio. Um, because FF, FFF, FF, FM <laughs> is a transmission mode. And FM came very popular in the 50s for transmission of music and voice. Why? Because it actually has an interesting um, capacity of resisting a lot of interference. So even a signal that has noise, uh, most of the time a decent signal with noise is easier understood and is of better quality on FM mode than on AM mode. And that's why FM is very often an all or nothing mode. If you notice that when you go to fringe areas, for example in your car, you're driving around, and you notice that the FM signal when you get far away drops and comes back. If you notice, um, usually it's I listen and I hear what it's saying and or else I barely understand or don't understand at all what's being said and that's what's happening with FM compared to AM. AM mode even on the weak signals you still understand you still hear it there's a little bit more noise on it but you still understand what's being said yet a stronger signal on FM is usually very clean very crisp and an AM signal that is stronger will still have some kind of noise over it also. Um, also, the fact that um, now this is a fact of wide FM because FM and wide FM have only one difference. FM is of a certain size and is sometimes called narrow FM on some receivers because it is of a very small size, typically an FM signal or narrow FM signal is not much bigger than a AM signal in its footprint. It might actually be, you know, only of about five or six kilohertz um, bandwidth. But a wide FM signal is much bigger, takes much more space on the spectrum. So you can actually space FM signals 5 kilohertz apart but you can you know put wide FM signals much wider typically um, I think on the FM band it's um, 30 kilohertz if I'm not mistaken it's very wide compared to a narrow FM signal now that the reason why wide FM exists is because the wider a signal the more information you can send with it it's a little bit like on the internet the wider the bandwidth of the cable that brings the internet to your home 
the faster your internet's going to be because there's more space for information. And a wide FM signal is used on the FM band for that reason. It's because there's much more information, so the sound quality is much better. Typically, a wide FM signal is probably close to um, you know CD quality. And um, there's a lot of information there, um, and you know it's probably not CD quality, but it's I would say wouldn't it wasn't probably is not very far from it. Um, so for voice and music, they've decided to use wide FM, and because of its capacity of really really eliminating the the interference. Well, even an average FM signal sounds good, while an AM signal that is of the same strength is going to sound okay, but there's going to be static over it. Like I said, the thing is, FM signals tend to drop out very fast. They usually are an all or nothing mode very often. Now. The difference also between those is uh, this. Let's say here, this is going to be a, this is a frequency modulated signal. This is what it looks like on a graphic. If you watch my, watch my AM mode, you've noticed that the AM mode had a central carrier, which was a line in the middle, and it had varying amplitude so you would see the peaks would change and this would go with the voice frequency modulation is exactly what it says it means that when you talk you actually change the actual frequency of the transmission so as you're talking the frequency goes up or down slightly varying with what you're actually transmitting in a very fast pace. So the waves actually compress or get a little uh, more amplitude between each of them. But the amplitude, the size or the bandwidth of the signal is always the same. It never is more or less. It is simply compressed a little more or a little less because it varies the frequency, not the size of the signal. Um, you know, AM mode varies the size of a signal. So that's why an AM mode with just a carrier takes less space than when it has voice. But on FM, um, you know, if you just send a carrier or if you send voice, the space that it takes on the band is going to be exactly the same. It's just that the frequency is not going to be the same if you transmit voice. There's going to be little variations. Not that much, you know, it's not, uh, not going to shift by kilohertz. It's just going to shift uh, slightly, well, you know, megahertz, let's say megahertz. But, you know, it's going to slight, slightly vary depending on the frequency of the audio and information we're sending through it. So that's FM mode. And FM mode is uh, what you get on a receiver also. Now, where do you find FM signals? You know that my ICOM has FM on it. So you're wondering, uh, is there any FM signals on shortwave? Yes, there are. There aren't wide FM. I've never received any wide FM signals. Although, you know what? Anything is possible in life. But uh, there's FM signals a little bit on shortwave. Typically, you'll hear FM signals around, um, let's say, above first of all above 25 megahertz um, second of all they're concentrated uh, probably with the FM to studio link transmitters around 26 megahertz uh, say 25.700 to 26.200 there's a little bit of FM in the out of banders so um, if you listen to out of band transmitters um, you know, people calling CQ on 26 or 27 megahertz. Uh, some of them use FM, but it seems to be more popular in Europe than it is in North America. 
And uh, the last space where you'll see FM is in the 10 meter amateur radio band, where roughly from about 29.300 up to 29.700, you'll have FM signals. And actually in the 29600 to 29700 range, there's actually some uh, FM amateur radio repeaters that are used. So um, there's a little bit of stuff on FM. Uh, but, you know, a radio, most portable receivers don't have FM. It's not uh, for shortwave. You know, you'll see FM on a portable, but that's the uh, FM radio band where you'll listen to voice and music. Um, most FM mode signals on a um, communications receiver like mine is for, in this case, th this receiver goes also on VHF, UHF, because above 30 megahertz FM is very popular, or narrow FM. But uh, it is there also because there's a little bit of stuff on FM, but that's not a mode you'll be using a lot. And you know what? If you don't have FM on your radio, it's not really a problem because you can tune FM signals on shortwave by simply putting your radio on AM mode and just tuning off frequency. And there's a good chance you'll still be able to understand what they're saying. And like I said, FM and wide FM is simply that. There's FM that uses a certain bandwidth say 5 kilohertz and wide FM is wider it's meant for signals that use larger bandwidths like 30 kilohertz for example so uh, that's pretty much it FM is there because it is um, also um, much better on the audio than AM mode so you'll have on FM you'll have better voice and on wide FM you, of course you'll have you know real good clarity for uh, even music and um, as for the electronics well a receiver that gets FM is technically a little more complex than a receiver that gets AM because the technology is different so you'll need you know a little more circuitry to uh, decode FM signals than you would with an AM signal and that's why FM was not there at the start because it required uh, more complex receivers and especially in the time of tube receivers it's a little more difficult so uh, this was FM and wide FM hope that you understood something about what I said and that I'm not too scrambled the things I was saying and hope you enjoyed this series on the different terms and abbreviations and terminology we use in radio <laughs>